Welcome to the Character Creator Hair Creation Tutorial. In this video, I'll guide you through the process of creating Character Creator conformable hair. Although the process is not difficult, there are many steps to follow. So let's begin. First, inside Character Creator, I'll need to export a body template in FBX format. Let's not include the calibration motion because it will not be needed. Next, inside Maya, I'll import this character into the scene. And the first thing I'll need to do is create a scalp mesh for the hair. We'll need the scalp mesh to serve as a backdrop to the hair strips. I do this first by selecting the faces on the head in the shape of the hair scalp. So right now, I'm in the orthographic side view, which will let me select both sides at the same time. The scalp mesh will cover the bold spots that the hair strips will miss. Now that I have the faces selected, I'll extract this mesh as a separate object. The scalp so far is too skin tight, which will cause flickering. I'll need to offset the vertices in the direction of the normals to enclose the head. Let's create a scalp material so we can actually see it. And now I'll adjust the scalp a bit by cutting the back a bit shorter and modifying the shape of the sideburns with mirror on. So that completes the foundation for the hair and from here we can begin to model the hair strips. Let's fast forward to where the hair strips is complete. As you can see, the strips consist of varying sizes and shapes, with some duplicated wherever possible. Let's take out a few strips from the front so you can see what is happening here. The hair is actually built up of many layers of hair pieces. When building your hair pieces, try not to have them intersect as much as possible if you're using soft cloth physics. Now let's take a look at the UV layers. For the scalp, the UV is a single piece laid out in a way that is easy to texture. For the hair strips, the UVs are laid out over each other where the strips are the same or similar. This will not only conserve texture maps, but also apply the same physics settings to equivalent hair groupings. Moving on, I'll be saving the hair strips UVs for texture reference inside Photoshop and do the same for the scalp. Now, I can start to work from these UVs to create all the textures for the hair. Let's fast forward to look at the final textures required for CC hair and take a look at the first scalp texture set. First is the diffuse texture, which was just the diffuse layer multiplied over the opacity texture. Next is the bump map, which won't be converted to normal map. The specular map with pure black background that matches the opacity texture. An opacity map has hazy borders to create a nice gradient scalp. And lastly, the RGB mask, which is pure red because the scalp tint is the same as the base color of the hair. This map can be saved in very small resolution, something like 16x16 16 16 will do. Now, let's take a look at the hair strips texture set. The diffuse map is just a bunch of hair strands with color highlights. 
Bump map is also a bunch of hair strands, and they don't necessarily have to match the diffuse map. For the specular map, I just fill the canvas with noise and extrude it in the direction of the hair flow. Then I set the layer on multiply over the opacity map. And now for the opacity map, pay special attention to the hair flow. The RGB mask has three layers, for hair root, base, and tip coloring. And lastly, the hair strips physics map for simulating dynamic animation. Make sure the root of the hair has several pixels of pure black coloring to bind completely to the head bone. Otherwise, the hair strands will just fall straight to the floor. Let's move on and combine the separate meshes together to create a dual material single hair mesh. Because of the limitations of DX9 transparency sorting, we'll need to combine the mesh from the inside out to avoid flickering artifacts. First is the scalp mesh, which I'll also assign to a different layer and turn off the visibility for easy access to the hair strands. Now comes the laborious task of selecting strand by strand from the inside, and combine them into separate layers. You will also find it easier to hide the layers as you go, so you can move on to combine together the next layer. It's probably a good idea to name the layers sequentially, so it will be easier to combine everything together in the end. Now that all the layers are combined and appropriately named, I'll merge all the hair strands together starting from the first layer to the last. Next, I'll create two materials one for the hair scalp, and another one for the hair strips.
and I'll load the diffuse, bump, specular, and transparency maps into the texture channels. Then I'll need to drop the hair strips material on the hair strands mesh. Now I'll do the same for the hair scalp material and apply that as well. So this is the scalp in its final form. And the hair strips in its final form. I think there's something wrong with the specular transparency. It looks like I have inputted the bump map into the specular channel on accident. Now that's looking a lot better. And to finish up, I'll select the scalp and hair strips in that order and make the final mesh combine. And name the entire geometry RL hair mesh so Character Creator can recognize it. In this next section, I'll talk about the preparation process of the hair for Character Creator. Inside Maya again, I have the completed RL hair mesh along with the character template. First, I'll center pivot on this mesh so I can have easier access to it and I'll reposition the pivot to be aligned with the head bone. Next, I'll select the head bone along with the hair mesh and perform a skin bind operation. Make sure bind 2 is set to selected joints. And lastly, we'll select all the meshes and the skeleton hierarchy and perform a FBX export. Now back inside Character Creator, I'll drag the FBX file into the 3D viewport. I'll need to load the FBX key file for DRM related information and bone scale data. In the next window, I'll make sure the RL hair mesh is designated as hair and press the OK button to import. The hair diffuse is looking a bit faded, so I'll have to pull the diffuse strength back to 100. This is a mistake on the part of Character Creator because it reads Maya's Diffuse settings into the Diffuse Strength, whereas it should actually be read into the Diffuse Color setting, but this is an easy fix, so no big deal. Now is the time to activate Appearance Editor and let it revert to default textures. And since there are no default textures, Appearance Editor will use the source textures as the default textures. We'll also increase the working resolution.
Now I'll load in the RGB mask texture, which we can do now. So now I'm able to adjust the color and specular values of the parts of the hair separated by the RGB mask. Let's demonstrate this capability by coloring the hair tips via the tertiary blue HSL controls. Let's end load Appearance Editor to bake in these purple tips. Appearance Editor has also overridden my specular maps, so I'm going to reload the specular textures, and that will also fix the strange opacity issues. I'll also save this hair out under Hair, Custom Category. I'm going to reset the scene to switch the default character, and I can test the hair out by double clicking on it and applying it. For the final step, I'll need to load the soft cloth weight map via Modify Physics Edit Weight Map Channel. And I'll just save this version of the hair with the weight map. Delete the old one and rename the new one. And that wraps up the hair creation tutorial. Please check out our other tutorials under the Character Creator Content Creation family.